Marketers, your time is now. Amasis is on a mission to give power to the marketer. With Amasis, they want you to wield the ultimate marketing power. Amasis is an omni-channel customer engagement platform that connects more native channels than any other vendor in the market. Say farewell to one-size-fits-all campaigns. Amasis empowers you with personalized, data-driven strategies that captivate your audience and boost your bottom line. Just ask Adore Beauty, Pet Circle, Total Tools, and City Beach. They've experienced firsthand the game-changing impact of Amasis on their marketing efforts. Seize the reins of your marketing destiny today. Embrace Amasis and watch your business soar to new heights. Visit Amasis, that's E-M-A-R-S-Y-S, amasis.com now. Welcome to The Checkout. We catch up with previous Add to Cart guests and ask them five quick questions to get to know them better and leave you with a little extra inspiration to get through your Friday. Here's your host, Bushy. Today's Checkout features Geordie Heiss, Senior Retail Product Consultant for Shopify in Australia and New Zealand. Far from his previous life as a graphic designer, Geordie leads growth and retention initiatives with Shopify's Australia and New Zealand retail merchants. And that includes fast-growing brands such as Inku, July, LSKD, and Oz Hair and Beauty. Geordie, thank you so much for joining us on The Checkout. We had a great chat with Alex from Baird earlier on the main episode around the Baird customer experience and how Shopify and Shopify Pause are helping enable that connection both across online and in-store experiences. So thank you for that. We're here to learn a little bit more about you, Geordie. Ready for five questions? Let's do it, Bushy. All right, number one, what is the weirdest thing that you've ever bought online? Bushy, I think you've been subject to me recoiling some of my uh, amateur football, footballing mm. greats and, and probably paid three or four years too long. So I think that drives me down the direction of all and sundry bandages and support supporting mechanisms that can extend my career beyond what was the, the use-by date. So not proud of that history. None of it worked. It was, it was a waste of time, but, you know, uh, a tick for effort. Are you still playing, Geordie? No, mate. Happily retired. Uh, suburban dad now. Three-year-old keeping me busy. Just tins on the hill now. Somewhat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Number two, who is your favorite retailer? There's a couple. I think definitely a soft spot for InQ and, and the work that, I, that they do as a multi-brand retailer. I think to be able to craft an experience and a, and a feeling and an emotion around, you know, not necessarily all of your own products is is pretty special. And I think the way that they deliver on that effortlessly, despite how much effort they put in, if that makes sense, is um, is pretty powerful. As a as an online merchant, I think Queensland Football Club is oh, yeah. uh, is is pretty special. I know there's a, there's a footy theme here, but to be able to capture niche and nostalgia and skirt the licensing issues that are around AFL and the like, I think they're well worth having a look at what. Uh, an accountant in COVID has done to build a, uh, a thriving nostalgic brand. I think that would be a fun chat. I might try and see if we can hit them up for a chat. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> I'm in Melbourne. But I am very, very happy, Geordie, that you didn't sit on the fence then because you work with so many retailers that you actually called a couple out. Well done. They're all my favourite, but those yeah. two just sprung to mind. Yeah. Beautiful. Number three, which e-commerce practice do you wish was history? Look, I think getting so tied up on attribution of channel is a is a tricky one. I think I know there's business reasons to look at attribution and performance, but you know if we're, we're being honest, you know uh, buyer journeys are very multi device and, and multi channel. So you know I think that there's rigor around trying to do well rev wise in a specific channel, does it, but it doesn't speak to the, the whole picture, particularly what we we see at Shopify. So I think softening the hardline attribution of you know total sales per channel and thinking more broadly is the way to go. I could imagine that is a constant challenge for you, especially in those earlier stages of conversation where you are talking about pause to new customers because we talked in the main episode about some of the softer benefits of of the pause system around the speed that team members can get up to skill with using the pause system because it's a bit more natural, the connection of customers, being able to see different tiers, first-time customers, multi-time customers, all of those things probably don't have direct attributable 
numbers assigned to them. So I suppose that's something you come up with every day. Yeah, I think even looking at the data that says typically customers that shop cross-channel, you know, are on average spending 80% more with a brand. So what's to say that because a, a buyer started online or in-store that they should acquire all of that revenue because their, their second and third purchases are preferential on, you know, their their, I suppose, physical location or how they like to receive their uh, their goods shipped to them. So I think that's why I think it's having a blended approach and a, and a rational uh, approach is, is pretty important in the business. Something I'm seeing a lot of at the moment is D2C brands. There seems to be a belief in market, and I don't know if it's true or not, that D2C brands can't survive as D2C brands alone, that they need some sort of physical presence, whether that be a pop-up a physical store permanent or wholesaling into other retailers, is that something you would agree with based on the data that you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's funny that the D2C darlings, but, you know, online is a channel at the end of the day and diversifying business and and where your customers come from and looking at what channels like brick and mortar make most sense in terms of, you know, customer acquisition costs and looking at where those buyers are are saturated to overcome, you know, something like a sizing or or a fit objective, uh, is, is incredibly valuable. So I think, yes, we're seeing a lot of those D2C darlings that right place, right time, right marketing budget uh, are trying to navigate their, their way out. But diversification of, of channels, whether it be, you know, B2B, physical retail, distribution or collaborations with other other, other influences that make sense. I think there's, we're seeing a real broad approach rather than just uh, sort of all chips in on, on online. Absolutely. All right. Can you recommend a book? or a podcast that our listeners should immediately get into? Look, a lot of people call themselves a futurist, but I think there's probably a, a select few in, in my view that are true futurists. And, and Doug Stevens' book, Re-Engineering Retail, so that quickly was a, a real eye-opener for me. So I'm a computer head, a, a digital head that's transitioned into to physical retail. So for me to understand what experience truly meant in a physical form. I also could always describe it and, and feel it and know it, but I think the way that he nailed that and showcased what was important to be able to not just deliver it once, but deliver it repeatably and scalably in a way that makes sense, but felt personal each time that it happened. I think he really shifted uh, my view on what was transactional retail to experiential retail and, and thinking about market forces in motion. So Again, it's a bit of a bit of a rabbit hole with with Doug Stevens if you go down that that track, but uh, certainly uh, that one was the, the the kernel of inspiration that I needed to go down the path that I'm on. How old are we talking with that book? I'm sure I'll be fact checked pretty quickly, but I reckon five or six years. Okay, brought, cool. So we're talking book. recent recent history. Good. Okay. Yeah, he's brought out resurrecting retail posts, which is sort of around you know post COVID world and, and yeah. how that's changed. But yeah, very interesting. Good good place to start. Beauty. Great recommendation. Thank you. Last one, finish this sentence. The future of retail is? Unified. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> Tell me your version of unified, Jordy. I think when you're consolidating where your buyer shops, whether that be in-store, online, across several channels, and being able to have a single view of that customer to be able to provide the best customer experience that makes sense for them and to be able to operationalize on the back end as a brand. You know, we see that the brands that really put true personalization and the customer in front of a lot of those decisions, they're the ones that are truly succeeding. And we talked about those D2C darlings before. A lot of them are falling flat on their face because they don't know how to do that in, in different channels. So yeah, that's a lot of what we're seeing. Love it. Jordy, thank you for joining us on the checkout. Thank you, Bushy. Appreciate it. To hear more from Geordie, jump back into episode 393, where Geordie is joined by Alex McNabb, the COO of Baird Footwear, and they discuss all things Shopify Pause. Thanks for listening, and until next time, keep adding to cart.